Well, to tell us a little bit more about that decision in Washington, France 24's foreign editor Ketavan Gorgistani is with me. Ketavan, nice to see you. Um, first of all, we know Ukraine has been asking for these weapons, controversial as they are, for quite some time. Why has the US taken this decision now? Well, the explanation from uh, the Pentagon is that it is the best ammunition to arm the Abrams tanks. And it just so happens that uh, these Abrams tanks, at least the first batch of the Abrams tanks announced by the U.S., 10 of them are expected to be delivered to Ukraine in the second half of the month of September. So it makes sense uh, timing-wise. It is a U-turn for the United States because for months they were saying, no, we're not going to send these type of uh, munitions. Uh, but it's also the strategy that we've been seeing from uh, the Americans ever since uh, the start of that Russian invasion in Ukraine. Uh, they've said this about the Patriot missiles, about the Abrams tanks, even about the F-16s. At the beginning they say no, and eventually at some point they give the green light. And that message uh, is explained by the White House, by the Pentagon, as saying that they want to send the right weapons at the right time, and that's how uh, they're arguing that this is the right way to do it. The U.S. also not the first ones to mm -hmm. send these types of uh, munitions, because the uh, U.K. actually announced that back in March, and the same reaction came from uh, the Russians, very angry reaction at that announcement. And finally, there's the goal, of course, uh, to help uh, to sustain uh, that counteroffensive. Tony Blinken yesterday uh, saying that, that this was going to help sustain and build further momentum for that counteroffensive that is not going exactly as fast as everyone had hoped. And now Interestingly, Ketavan, there's new polling out in the United States, isn't there, that suggests a majority of Americans currently do not favour increasing funding for the war effort in Ukraine. I wonder how significant you think that is and if you think it might actually affect US policy. Well, right now, uh, the, this polling shows that basically 55 percent of Americans are against new funding, more funding, 45 in favor uh, of that. But it's a little bit more complicated than uh, just a waning support for uh, Ukraine. Yes, it is slowing down. It's reducing. It's not as strong as it was before. Uh, but if you look at some of the other pollings done around at that same time, when you ask Americans uh, whether the U.S. should do more or uh, should do less to help uh, Ukraine, it's basically 50-50. So after 18 months of uh, this war, after tens of billions of U.S. dollars being sent to Ukraine, there is still half of the population that is supporting it. So you could see it pretty much uh, both ways. The other question is, what impact does the popular support have on the politics of the Americans and on how Congress will vote for more money. And that is going to be uh, interesting because you're going to have uh, Joe Biden asking for an emergency funding for uh, Congress to send more money, $24 billion. Uh, he's asked for it uh, because the original uh, money is going to run out by the end of uh, September. And right now, even though you're seeing some opposition on the left because they want that money to go to domestic issues, on the right, because they want to get out of Ukraine, they don't want to spend that money. Still, there is overwhelming bipartisan support, both in the Senate and in the House. So at least for the foreseeable future, there's going to be a political debate. But in the end, that money, at least for now, is going to go through. Thanks very much indeed for your analysis. That's Ketavan Gorgistani for us there.